hello hello and welcome to another video good morning my friends i hope you're having a great day today today i'm all right i'm gonna get this day started we're gonna go on about our business girl let's let's dive straight into it so this morning i have a word for you and this word is a curse without a cause now this is the word that i got in my spirit this morning and of course i had to do a bit of um deep diving because i made videos for you guys yesterday um, I have seen things happen in my own life. I've seen things happen in the lives of the people around me. And I also see the oblivious nature um, that people kind of sit in. Like, why is this happening to me? Like, I didn't do anything to deserve this. And they tell me the list of things that they're doing. And I see, well, everything that you're doing actually proves that you actually do deserve this. And unfortunately, these children, even that you say that you love, some of the stuff that you're doing, um, they don't deserve, but they will get it because um, there is no curse without a cause. So I think that's a perfect place for us to start off. We're going to just jump straight into this message. I am going to read to you today. I have notes over here, so because y'all know I'm long-winded and I want to keep on topic and just get out of here, okay? So I'm reading from Proverbs 26, the 26th chapter, and we're going to start at the second verse. That is the verse that I want to read. And it says, well, let's start from the top. Um, like snow in the summer and like rain in the har harvest, so honor is not fitting for a short-sighted fool. Like a sparrow in her wandering, like a swallow in her flying, so the curse without a cause does not come on the undeserving. So we're going to start there, like I said, because a lot of people say, you know, I don't deserve this and I don't deserve this. But the Bible tells us that a curse without a cause just doesn't happen. Like a sparrow, like a sparrow in her wandering, like a swallow in her flying. And that if you read the other translations, which is why I paused right there, there are different translations. They all basically say the same thing. The animals aren't just wandering. They're not just flying. They're not just searching around without cause. They're not just searching around for anything. They're searching around whether it's they're migrating for food. They're looking for something. They're in search for something. It's not for no reason. And I know that's, uh, what do you call it? Double negative. It's not for no reason. There's there, there will not be a reason that you see an animal just wandering all around without a cause in that same manner. No curse will come upon your life without a cause for it to be there. Let's talk about a few things because I have for you two stories that I'm going to share. And if I get more, like if I get a prompt to share more, I will share more, um, I don't usually like using other people's experience. However, these people don't, they're not going to remember me. They don't even know me. I would say not remember me, but they don't know me. Um, and I give, I have given you guys a lot of examples in my own life, but I want to give you um, some more examples. So you guys know I used to be a massage therapist. I am not a massage therapist anymore. And I used to take um, house calls. Um, and I had one particular client that I met for at a spa event. And this lady says, hey, you know, I really like the service that you provided here for us. Can you go and see my mom? Um, my mom's bedridden, and she didn't give too much detail about what was going on with her mom. She just told me that her mom was bedridden, and she could really use the services that I had provided there for the ladies. So I'm like, okay, you know, as an elderly woman, woman, I don't... I, I believe that working with the elderly is truly a calling. However, so is working with God's people. You know what I mean? So I go there and I realize they really just want a spa service. They want a spa set up. But there's so much more going on here in the environment. I will say that the first appointment that I had, I found out that this lady um, was suffering with dementia. But it wasn't just any case of dementia. And it never is. Dementia is never just any old thing. But this lady had dementia running through her family. So not only her her parents, I believe it was. So I think it was her mother, but all of her mother's siblings. And you know what? I don't even think it was the mother. I think it was all of the siblings. So there was a lot of siblings. And every last one of the siblings, the girl siblings at that, were diagnosed with Alzheimer's at the same age. This lady was young. And when I say young, I'm talking like 60s is really young. To be at the state that she was in, it was young. And this didn't just happen, like, this wasn't the first day that this happened. It's not like it just happened. It happened to her in her 40s. So really, really young. 
for her to be in the state that she was in. And the husband is telling me this story. And, you know, the Lord is speaking as the husband is speaking because I've already pointed out a bunch of other things. But they're just kind of like, you know, it's whatever. You know, this just this is just something that runs in their family is what they said. Every one of the girl children were in this exact same state and actually died early. It just runs in our family. And let me tell you that this lady owned a little shop. Like she owned a, what do you call it? Like a flea market. She owned a flea market shop and she used to go to this flea market shop like every single day. You know, like it was her job. And this one day she left the little shop and tried to come back home and she got lost. This is how they found out that she was actually in the beginning stages, much like her siblings were at the same age. She got lost. They had to find her. And that was really the start of the end. She laid in that bed a mere shell of a person. She didn't know her name. She didn't know anything. She had very little knowledge of what was going on, except when I was there. And I'm not saying me as in like me, the me I'm saying, except when someone else with the knowledge of something more was going on was there. But the people around the family did not want to acknowledge that there was a different issue. And I didn't get any more information. And let me be honest with you. I didn't come up on some of the wisdom that I'm going to share with you here today. So that's the first story. The second story is kind of a crazy one, a little vulgar, but I'm going to go ahead and share it with you because um, we talk a lot about sex here because a lot of you guys, I made a video for you yesterday, just doing things, saying things as it relates to sexual immorality. And you're not seeing the sin of sexual immorality, um, your adultery, your fornication, the way that God sees it. And there are consequences for those actions. So we're going to go ahead and t I'm going to tell you this one as well. So I was at basic training and that's my husband. I was at basic training and one of the girls walked in. I'm not going to go across that long story. And I immediately was like, something's not right here. Something's not right with homegirl. I don't know what it is, whatever. The girl starts talking to me, asking me all kinds of questions. And, you know, we we're chaptering out. So it was a we had a lot of time to do absolutely nothing. And the new girls would come in and you would hear about people's stories. Rather, it was they were being chaptered out because they had, you know, they were anemic or they had sickle cell anemia or you know they they got they were pregnant and they didn't know things like that people being chaptered out this one girl specifically told me um she didn't broadcast this information she told me that she was leaving because her son had an issue with his testicles and this happened she hadn't gotten to basic training she was just in reception the son had an issue with his testicles and she didn't have anyone to care for him as he went through this surgical procedure now joining the army was something that she wanted to do for her family something that she needed to do um to get out of a lifestyle that she was in that I didn't know anything about at that time I just heard the story about the the child's testicles and I'm like okay yeah that's probably information like why do I need to know that right so we go throughout the week there at the battery and one day the girl, we're all like laying in our bunks and the girl begins to tell this story about um her previous work she was an exotic dancer and not only was she an exotic dancer but she performed very um sadistic very uh, acts on people and a lot of these men she knew were married men okay so we're talking double whammy here not to say if you're sleeping around with a married an unmarried man that you're like you're more justified you're not you're equally as wrong it's still sexual immorality. But we're talking about adultery to, to top it on up. We're talking about one of the Ten Commandments here. And she, I guess she could, you could tell yourself, well, I'm not sleeping with any of these men. I'm just doing these, you know, lascivious acts on them. And she was telling the girls of one story where a guy came in. Now, what? Th there are no odds. OK, this was just divine that she had already revealed this information to me. And then she's telling this story about how she would this man would come in and he wanted his testicles stepped on with high heels. And she began to tell this story, not as a cautionary tale toward these women, but she began to tell this story as if it were funny. As if to say, oh, how much money I made, how great my life was. And she did not acknowledge this sin 
as God saw this sin. And there is a problem. Now, I just gave you two examples. One, you see one, you see the sin traveling through generations. The other one, you see the start of a problem. And let me tell you that when you go to doctors with issues such as these, they say things like, well, this is hereditary. This is something that just runs in the family. And I want to tell you that a curse is something that just runs in the family. But we have the remedy for that here in the text, here in the scripture. This isn't stuff that I made up. I'm going to go and, and give you very specific things, but it's laid out for you here in the scripture. Some of you simply just don't want to listen. And you think that you're going to be able to find the medication and you think that you're going to be able to find a doctor and you think that you're going to be able to get a surgery and get a therapist to undo some of the things that are going on in your life. And I'm telling you a curse without a cause doesn't exist. And unless you repent and you address the cause, the curse will remain. So again, I say, I gave you two examples there of someone like it's, you can see it's happening time and time again. And then a problem that is just starting. So if that little boy goes off to have sons of his own and his sons have issue with their testicles and, you know, maybe this maybe this turns out to be a situation where, you know, I would say God forbid, but God forbid you be disobedient is really where the, the forbiddance needs to be. The forbearance needs to be is God forbid you disobey. So then he goes on to have children and then his children, if he can have children. Because that was one of his mother's woes, like, well, I really got to get this done because I want him to be able to have children, not even thinking about what she has done to this other man. You understand what I'm saying? So then you see issues like that, that go throughout, like they go throughout time and you're trying to diagnose, the doctors try to diagnose you with all these other things. It really, it was, a, it was your disobedience that caused this curse to come up on your life. And I put here, sometimes it's an isolated event and sometimes it's cyclical. Who am I to tell you that? Who am I to say, you know, I'm no one to say that. And no one else is either to say, you know, you have cancer and this cancer is because you did this. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it's not. Go read Job's story in the Bible. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it's simply a test, a test so that God can elevate you to the next. I have experienced this in my own life. Some of the things that come up, have come up on my life are a direct cause of my own disobedience other things a direct cause of my parents disobedience and some things simply a test to see if God can entrust you with some more weight but repentance is truly necessary and even though you like if if I saw this example a few times if like, I'm not even going to say the person's name because I don't know the person's name. But I remember watching, like, a few years ago, this lady had, like, five kids. She was on YouTube. She had, like, five kids, and all of the kids were autistic. That is symbolic that something is terribly wrong. Everybody's got cancer. That is symbolic that something's terribly wrong. Nobody's married. That is symbolic that something is terribly wrong. Everybody's blind. No one can hear. Everybody got the same ear that's deaf. That's symbolic that something's wrong. Everybody's poor. That is symbolic that something is wrong. Everybody dies at the age of who knows. You know what I mean? Like that is symbolic that something is wrong. But can I say that one isolated event is the the sign of a curse? Well, I'm not going to sit here and say that. I will say you, repentance is necessary. Communication with God, relationship with God is necessary so that you will know if it is or it isn't. I told you guys in a video, like, I don't know, sometime at the end of last year, maybe the middle of last year, um, I was having a problem with my eye. Now, I can see without these glasses on, okay? Never wrong with my sight. Um, but at some point in time, something was wrong with my sight. And the Lord surely told me, this is what this is. You can go to all the doctors you want. You can even you can even get surgery on your eye. They can go in there removing stuff, but they won't remove this because this is me. This is me. So, um, yeah. So, like I said, I saw the person with the autistic kids. That's symbolic. Of, like when there's come on six kids, you got six kids, you got two kids, you got three kids, and they and everybody's autistic. Something's wrong with everyone. And I'm not saying I have a son who's high functioning autistic. I'm not saying that that I'm not saying that there's something wrong with them. I'm saying every single child 
we have to look. We have to look. Everybody has cancer. No one is married. And I put this example here, and I'm going to tell you this example as well. Like I said, these people don't know me, so hey. And even if they do know me, I'm here to help the people of the Lord, okay? I had a high school friend who, when I moved away, I found this out. I had a high school friend, probably around the age of 18, she was sleeping around with one of the police officers there. This police officer had an entire family. Her family later on found out about it, and it was like a whole thing. And she was a very sweet girl, like, during high school. I mean, we were all doing that crazy stuff. Y'all know I was a teenage mother. So I'm not saying I was doing all that crazy stuff, but you know what I mean. Like, it was she wasn't a part of the crowd of people who you would think any of those things about. And that's why you really shouldn't think anything about anyone because you don't really know the story. Even as a teenage mother, you don't know my story. I don't know the next teenage mother's story. But she found herself in this whole foolishness. Sometime at the end of last year, the Lord tells me to reach out to the girl after he gives me a dream. And I'm telling you, like, girl, I'm 30 now. That was so far away from my remembrance. 18. Like, you know, you don't be remembering this, them people and that stuff. But we were friends. We weren't friends when all of this happened, but we were friends. And the Lord kind of reminded me of her by way of a dream. I'm not going to sit here and tell you the dream. So I reach out to her, and when I reach out to her, she tells me that she is the same age as I am, so we about to be, you know, a certain age, right? And she's at home. She's at home. She doesn't have any kids. She's not married. And then my dream begins to make sense. And as I prepared this message for you today, the Lord gave me, reminded me of this example to give to you. It might seem to everyone else that she's just busy with work. She's just excelling her career. And that's why she is, and she wants to be helpful to her parents. That's why she's still at home. She's unmarried. She's with no children. But the Lord says, no, there is consequences for sin. And even if you choose not to acknowledge, like even if you're like, oh, I'm sorry, they went on about their business, you went on about yours, a curse without cause doesn't exist. So there is a cause for the reason that she's unmarried with no children. And it is my prayer that she repents and that her life too comes together. But you don't just get to do stuff. You might be very successful in other places. You don't just get to do whatever you want to do. And not be punished for. And I said this. I just gave that example. I'm going to give this other example as well. There was a lady. I was I was watching like. I'm not even going to say the name of the podcast. Because so some of these podcasts just be out here. Be talking about stuff. Stirring up stuff in you. And, and they'll have every therapist come on live. And all this kind of stuff. And none of these people are actually speaking the sort of truth that sets people free. That is acknowledging that your sin is disgusting to God. That is repenting for that sin. I don't care if you get the world class counsel the world-class therapist you will not be able to undo the judgment of the lord period not while you live this life and darn sure when you exit the judgment will be set so you can seek out a counselor and all that kind of stuff and not address your real issues if you want to but that'll be on you at the end of the day so I was listening to the lady. They were they were bringing all these people on, like people pay and they come on and they ask them questions, right? And this one lady, again, sleeping with, um, she was sleeping with a married man. I don't think that she knew it was a married man. Um, but then she found out that it was a married man. And one of her questions was like, should I reach out to the wife? And they were like, the, the guest that was on there was like, really, you need to check your motives. Why do you want to reach out to the wife? And she was like, basically like she needs to know. Like, I want her, I want her to feel like I feel. Basically, that's what she was saying. And to take that stand, that stance is very dangerous. Because as long as you stand right there, not only are you being unforgiving, which is you need to be you need to be forgiving towards other people because you also want to be forgiven for your sins. That is how you enter into the kingdom of heaven. So if there's no forgiveness of sins, what the blood of Jesus did for us on the cross, if there's no forgiveness of sins, there's no you entering into heaven. There's no you entering into the kingdom of God. So we want the forgiveness of our sins. So if we want the forgiveness of our sins, we then need to forgive other people. That's just how it goes. I'm not saying that it's easy, baby. Whoa, help me, Lord. I'm not saying that it's easy. I didn't say that it's easy. It's actually not easy. But you need to be willing. 
And with your willingness, that's where the grace of God comes in. With your willingness, that's when real change happens. When you're willing to forgive someone who has hurt you, that's when real change happens. That's when real blessings, real generational blessings comes through. When you're really willing, God will step in and he will meet you at the place of your willingness. But forgiveness is necessary. So to take a stance like that lady, like, oh, you know, I want to I want to avenge myself when God says that vengeance is his. I did a video for you guys that the Lord told me, like, I'll avenge you. I'm not going to go around, you know, trying to get pay, repayment for stuff. That I leave that up to God, the God who knows every single thing and who sees everything, even my mess. Come on now. Even my stuff he sees. Even my shortcoming, even the stuff that I've done is not hidden from him. So when you think about your retaliation and when you think about someone else needs to pay, well, you think about how you need to pay. And that helps you through all of that. So don't you sit there. Don't you ever, not as it relates to something like um, infidelity, cheat, whatever. Don't you ever sit in the seat of someone else needs to pay because therefore you're not seeing your sin like God sees your sin, especially something of that nature. You laid down with someone else's spouse. And even if you didn't know with someone else's spouse, you laid down with a man that is not your husband. That is a sin. So instead of trying to throw stones at someone else, you need to look at the sin. You need to see the sin as disgusting as God sees. And I'm not talking to you from a place I don't know. God has shown me things about my own life and said, look how much fun you were having. Show me like in a full vision. Look how much fun you were. You were laughing. Look at the smile on your face. You were having yourself a good time. It's disgusting to me. And I woke up and fell down on my knees. God, forgive me. Forgive me. Because against you only did I sin. Like David said, against you only did I sin. Against you only was this wrong. I know I might have hurt this person. I know I might have hurt my husband. I know I might have hurt my mother. I know my grandma and my grandpa and my sisters and brothers might be mad. But God, against you only have I sinned. Against you only have I sinned. Because you are the one. Who lays down the curses. And you're the one who lays down the blessings. It's you. Against you only have I sinned. You need to be able to look at your sin. Begin to look at your sin in that manner. So what is sin? So what is a curse? I mean. A curse is a punishment for sin. Simply put. So you're talking about. You know there's a lot of. You know modern witchcraft and all this kind of stuff going on you as a child of God there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus you don't get to recite that if you're not in Christ Jesus how are you in Christ Jesus you have accept, accepted him as your Lord and Savior you accepted his payment for your sins on the cross so there's no condemnation for you what does it mean for something to be condemned baby have you seen a condemned building before baby it's torn down it's torn down. It's destroyed. It's destroyed. So a curse is punishment for sin. So don't you worry about witches, warlocks, all that kind of stuff. Don't you worry about none of that if you're not in sin. If you are in sin, go watch the video that I made yesterday. Blood is required. So you need to get that together because that's serious. This is for real. And everybody knows that except these so-called Crucifix wearing followers of God, followers of Christ. I, 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 I have a hard time even saying that because most of you walking around talking about I'm a Christian don't even know the God who you claim that you're serving. You don't know him. And at the end of the day, he will tell his father, he don't know you. Depart from me. I never knew you. So again, I say a curse is a punishment for sin. 
And I'm going to read Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter. We're going to start at the 26th verse. Behold, today I'm setting before you a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you listen and obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I am commanding you today, and a curse if you do not listen and obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the, from the way in which I am commanding you today by following, acknowledging, or worshiping other gods which you have not known. It shall come about when the Lord your God brings you into the land, when the Lord your God, which brings you into the land, which you are entering to possess. So when shall it come about? See, some people are like, well, I did this stuff like right now. I did this. I'll have myself a good time. Even this weekend, I was out there having myself a good time. Nothing happened to me. I'm still here. I still got my job. Like my life is still popping. I'm still going. Nothing wrong here. Hmm. Nothing wrong here. But right here, it says it shall come about. When you enter into the land that God said you was that you were to possess. So you don't know when the curse will come about. You don't know when it will come about. For your mistakes. Imagine that. Imagine saying that you want to leave a legacy. Oh, legacy, legacy. That's the big one today. Legacy, legacy, legacy. For my children, you're leaving nothing. You're not leaving anything. You're not leaving anything. And then let's go on to Deuteronomy chapter 5. And let me start at the 8th verse. They shall not make any graven image or any likeness or anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shall not bow down unto them nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God. I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers up on the children unto the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So let's go back to the other verse. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers up on the children unto the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. And that's the 21st century King James, Ver King James Version. But I love what it says there of those who hate me. And some of you are going to say, but I don't hate the Lord. I love the Lord. I do. And the Lord looks at you. You know, he's looking at the scale of your life and he says, it's no love. And what a lot of you don't realize is unlike the world and all of their inclusion and all of their, you know, oh, don't be, don't you offend people and just being so inclusive. God ain't that inclusive. That's not God. Okay. That's not God. So you either love me or you hate me. There's no middle ground. There's no middle road. You love me or you hate me. So what does it mean? If, if you say I don't hate God, well, do you love him? Well, what does that mean? John 14 and 15 says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Then you'll keep my commands if you love me. So then you ask yourself the question, Lord, do I keep your commands? And for the majority of people, that's no. You're not rolling out of the bed with a man that's not your husband talking about, Lord, I love you. You're not. I don't care about your church attendance. I don't care how much you pay your tithes. You're not. It's not happening. You are not in love with God. You do not love him. You are not getting drunk every single weekend, every single night, and talking about you love the Lord. You're not. You are not having abortion after abortion after abortion and talking about you love the Lord. You are not. You are not. So you fall into the category of those who hate him. And then the iniquity of you rests upon the children for the third and fourth generation. So some of you even, some of us even, some of you, some of us, got us. Okay, I said go, go us. Some of our problems have, been, have some of the problems, the iniquities that rest on us are because we are falling into that third and fourth generation. And some of you guys are simply placing restart on the whole cycle because you're doing the same thing that your mother did. So the sins of your mother, they're following you and then your children's children up into the third and fourth generation. It's no mystery how whole families stay in the same cycle generation after generation after generation. It might be a mystery to you, but it's not a mystery. It's not a mystery. So if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the father and he will give you an advocate 
to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. He will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live in you and we live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father and that you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I, too, will love them and show them to myself. And that's what I'm going to leave you with today. I hope that this message blessed you. I hope it challenges you to look at the areas of your life that you simply need to repent. You need to turn. You need to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior while it is still day, while you do still have time. And you need to see the sin like God sees it. As always, if you have a question, ask a question, and I'll see you in the next video.